about a little boy named Lucas Hernandez. Lucas's body was found under a bridge. Yeah. Southeast Harvey County. Yeah. Okay. Here in uh, Kansas. Lucas was the son of Jonathan Hernandez and Jamie Orr. Jonathan had a live-in girlfriend by the name of Emily Glass. Um, Lucas went missing February 17th of 2018. He was reported missing by the living girlfriend, Emily Glass, due to the fact that, um, Jonathan wasn't home a lot because he had to travel for work. And it doesn't really, I haven't really found any, like, facts about what his job is. Yeah, that or other than, or his like biological mother, other than she was in a different state when he went missing. When she reported him missing, she had said that she put him down for a nap and then- uh, Friday night. She, yeah, Friday night. <clears throat> and she took a shower and then fell asleep. And when she woke up, she found him gone and the back door open. The police came out to the house in southeast Wichita to um, investigate. They found no physical evidence that there was a break-in. Yeah, no physical evidence that there was a break-in, that everything in his room was accounted for, including all of his shoes and his jackets and stuff like that. So it was very unlikely that somebody broke into the house and took, and him. took him. Lucas had been on Kansas's CPS uh, Child Protective Services, uh, he had been on their radar for a while mm -hmm. for many different reasons. He was taken out of the home at seven months old. Yes. He wasn't returned until he was one. They had received multiple allegations from family members, I believe an aunt, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother had put in complaints of abuse yeah, kind of filed, filed reports yeah the school never reported the nine bruises that the school nurse had found on lucas the school stated that they did follow the law but they never reported the right. there's no bruises. evidence right there's no evidence yeah of them making any sort of report yeah report to dcf on that which it is our understanding that in the state of Kansas, yeah. most if not all school officials are mandated reporters. I know right. our mother has an early childhood degree and when she ran daycares, she yeah. was the director of daycares, quite a bit of daycares, and she was a mandated reporter. Correct. And so that's why I find it weird that like why hasn't, why did no one do anything? Why did no one say anything? This is a classic example of how the system right. fails these kids. And I'm also curious to know where the biological mother had been. Well, we don't know the story. We don't. That. And that's why I'm curious to know. If you happen to know, please reach out to us and let me know because I can't find anything about it. The bruises that he received were on a combination of different body parts as well as his face. So they were noticeable. It's not like they were not noticeable. Grandma had pictures and they were deep, deep bruises. Like the one on his face looked like fingerprint, like, you know, a finger Somebody marks. Somebody had slapped. Like slapped, slapped the living bejesus out of him. Yeah. And then he had multiple bruises that looked like fingerprints on his arms and on his legs. Let's just put up another picture of how cute this kid was. Right. He's just... Such a tragedy. It is. It's not fair. And what I don't get is how somebody could be so... How can you look into a face of... Malice towards... 
of something that's yeah. so cute and he's so adorable be able well and for uh, we don't want to we don't want to go too far ahead of ourselves because there is a reason as to why she may have been able to do that without any conscience um but from what i've read and his pictures all of the pictures i've seen kind of show his little personality dad says that he's real shy Mm -hmm. And as you can see, he's got a cleft palate, so he had um, a speech impediment. Oh, he was so cute. But he he had quite the little personality. Emily was the last person to see Lucas. With that, many reports were filed against her from domestic violence with boyfriend Jonathan to, um, I think... Neglect. The recent one was neglect of her one. They have a one-year-old daughter together. Lucas has a little sister. And that was uh, one to where she lost custody of her daughter. This... This lady cannot take care of children. Right. Not at all. I couldn't really find any records to why other than it was neglect. I can assume it's probably... The same a mixture of everything. Yeah, just at least the system was on her side, unlike well, her brothers, which it is disgusting. Took him dying in order for them to yeah, be on her side, which is sad. We're gonna give you a few examples of why now in time, during this investigation, she becomes basically the the, the person of interest. Yeah, the person of interest in this case, because all of her facts and facts. Let me not hold the tape while and I do stories. That. Facts, yeah. Um, are Keep not changing. Yeah. And they're not adding up with any timeline or anything like that. For example, the um, police were called to the Hernandez home multiple times between 2016 to 2018. Uh, February 2016, the police were called to the Hernandez house due to a fight that had broke out between Jonathan and Emily over an alleged bar tab where um, the police had found that Jonathan had sustained some injuries. In April of 2016, the police were then called to their house over a disturbance call that they had received, finding Emily holding a ax handle and Jonathan with a bloody nose Emily also had injuries herself, but the report said that they were fighting over uh, Emily saying that she was sexually assaulted by a male acquaintance. Whose acquaintance it was, we'll we don't know. know. Could never have been know. one of her male friends, could have been one of Jonathan's male friends, but f from what they walked in on, apparently it... it safe to say that she smacked him in the face with that axe handle. In efforts to find Lucas, his paternal grandmother hired a private investigator named David Marshburn. Yeah, because Emily obviously wasn't helping the situation. Right. Um, while the police continued to investigate Emily's timeline and, you know, all the Stories, I guess we can say stories because none yeah, of them were they really bad stories. Um, whilst they were going into that, she started speaking with the private investigator. You know, I, I really can I interject a second? This really reminds me of the Casey Anthony story oh, because God. she makes them yeah. run in circles and tries to, you know, divert them from the truth. Although they weren't that stupid and her stories did not match right. up from the beginning. So but that, that is a different she... story for us because that, Casey Anthony ha had help with that. I am, I am. Well, I'm just saying it, it that. really does remind me of that case because she made them run in right. circles. Right. And it's just. And like, that's why grandma decided to hire right. that private investigator. Which comes to our newest, um, what do you want to call it? I guess story lead during this case was the <clears throat> fact that while all this was going on, she decides to confide, Emily Glass confides into the private investigator, David Moshburn, 
by telling him that when she put Lucas to bed Friday night and she went to go get him up the next morning, he was dead. How do you go from him being kidnapped? And then the lady, the private investigator right. to his body. Right. How did you know where his body was? Exactly. And then while this is all happening, we find out that she is an avid meth user. Oh, yeah. They try to say that that's, like, that's, I think to me, makes me think that she was hallucinating or something because she, until she later on told the police that she's seen a black male and a white female standing outside her house staring into into her house and she swore up and down all she could think about was that and that they were the ones who took lucas so while they're trying to track these two people down running in circles we find out now that he was he, dead when she yeah. found him now we realize that she must have done something to this poor little boy well and when his body was found, his body was so decomposed that the only thing that was holding his upper torso and bottom half together was yeah. his t-shirt. They extracted DNA and other um, samples from his lower extremities because they were the ones that were less decomposed. Uh, that's how they found out that he had methamphetamines in his system. His body was too decomposed to be able to see uh, any type of cause of death. The same day that she led the private investigator to Lucas's body, they did arrest her for obstruction and interfering with law enforcement. And I think that is due to the fact that his body was found, like he, she basically she hid. Led. She led them to right. the body. And the body was like hid underneath a bunch of stuff to where if you didn't know what you were looking for, you wouldn't even realize it was there. June 8th, police respond to the Hernandez house. After Jonathan called 911. Right, where, or where Emily was living, John went to the house around 1 o'clock or 1.30 that morning and discovered that Emily had shot herself with um, an AR-15. It was with Jonathan's AR-15. Yep. I guess she had smoked a bunch of cigarettes right before maybe contemplating whether or not she should do it or not. Um, I mean, she killed a five-year-old little boy. Yeah. After the news broke about the suicide, the Wichita Police Department released a statement saying that they were not going to stop investigating Lucas's murder. Which I hope not because there is a lot of criminal activity. They're having a real big problem with criminal activity here in Wichita and keeping up with it. So I really hope that they do keep to that word and continue to right. investigate and it until they have a closed case. Now our one piece of evidence is gone. Right. So now we just have to basically stick to... But... We crime scene facts. did see something and we didn't look into it that she did have a suicide note. So maybe she left some information in there. She had three. Maybe she had some information in there. Yeah, that's a possibility. Please. These are not matter of facts. Right. They're just our opinions on what we've discovered throughout this case. All right. Well, that is our story on Lucas Hernandez. Please like, subscribe, share our videos if you like them. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.